Hey there everybody, welcome back to Easy Fish Tanks. Today we are going to be doing another breakdown of a five gallon tank and we're going to rescape it for a Dueling Peaks theme build. So for the Dueling Peaks build, we're going to be using two large pieces of this Dragon Rock here, Dragon Stone, however you want to call it. And then I will also be using some of this leftover spider wood in the tank. So that's going to look great. We're going to reuse some of these plants and I also have some other plans to add to the mix. First thing we need to do is get our blue dwarf gourami out of here. He's going to be going in the 60 gallon tank with the other dwarf gouramis and guppies. So he'll be really happy in there. Let's get him out and we'll get to it. All right, so now we're going to get this beautiful blue dwarf gourami out of this tank right now. This tank is doing really well, but I want to switch it up. I want to, I've never used Dragonstone for an escape, so I want to utilize that because I think it's a beautiful rock. So we're going to scoop this dude out, put him in the 60 gallon. Let's see how well this goes with one hand. Well, that was easy. That was pretty easy. Okay, now we're going to go get him to the other tank. Yeah, he's a beautiful fish. Let's get him going. Let's not leave him out too long. Okay, and here we are at the 60 gallon community tank I have going on. You can see I have another... Blue Dwarf Gourami right down here. He's doing real well. And yeah, this tank is super healthy. He'll be really happy in here. Look at that gigantic Siamese algae eater. He's so big. Where he is, I have him in the net. I'm chilling in the net right here. Okay, you see the guppy swimming around in the front too. So let's get him added in. We'll just, there he goes. These fish are just spectacular. He looks like he's a bit larger than the other one in there too. We are going to also do a dirted tank in the Dueling Peaks build that we're doing. And I'm gonna paint the uh, background black. So let's get back in there. We will start the teardown process. So now we need to get these plants out because I wanna reuse, uh, reuse most of these plants here. And we'll try to save whatever little snails we can as well. We'll start with these big green guys up front. We're gonna reuse most of these if we can, whatever we can fit in. See, I have a bunch of mulm on the bottom. So that's fine. Mom doesn't bother me none. I have my little Tupperware container over here. So this is where I'm going to be putting the plants in. We got a lot of plants in here. We'll do a little speed up process, but I'll show you first just how healthy these are. I love sand substrate. Things grow so well in the sand substrate. Lots of mom. That's all nutrients for these roots. There we go. That's just, this is the base of the plant right here. And then a few inches down, it's all roots. Got another little rock structure that I had built just like in the other tank. A little rock structure with some Anubias on it. Okay, well that's all the plants out. So that was, that was quick and easy. They were all rooted together in one big bundle. So now we're gonna take this tank outside and I'm just gonna dump out the existing substrate. Let me show you guys how much plants we actually got out of here. It's a whole entire big cup of bowl full of super healthy plants with a really good root system. Look at the root system that developed on these plants. That's fantastic. That's the power of the dirt substrate. I just love it. Just like last time, I'm gonna take this outside and I'll rinse it off. I don't think you guys are interested in seeing that. And I'll show you how I paint the background onto the tank. I think painting it black is just the best way to go in this situation. Alrighty, so we got the tank all clean, as you can see. Now we're going to be using this black acrylic paint. So this paint is gonna allow us to make a nice seamless background. I prefer using this over the stick-on backgrounds because the stick-on backgrounds eventually get kind of loose and water can seep between it and it just doesn't look as good. So I've never used this stuff before. Generally I go to Home Depot and I will buy the paint from there, but I happen to be by Michael's today. So I picked up the paint from there. We're gonna try this out, see how this one works. We'll probably have to do a couple coats. And as usual, I don't, I'm not prepared. So I need to unwrap all this. We're gonna use this little Dixie bowl here. That's where we're gonna put our paint in. And we will use a roller brush to apply our paint on here. We'll, like I said, we'll probably have to do a couple coats. That's fine. So first we wanna shake this up. That should be sufficient. We're gonna just pour a little bit in here. It's a little light gray. I'm hoping it comes out a bit darker. I need to be careful not to spill this all over and have my wife murder me. I'm gonna apply a little bit to the brush here and just give it a try. I'll be honest, normally my wife is the one that does this for me. Normally she's the one that paints the back of the tanks. So we'll see how I do on it. We'll see how I do on it. We're just gonna Slap this stuff on here and we'll see. Like I said, I'm anticipating having to do a couple coats. Doesn't matter if we get it on the black frame. 
But we'll definitely need to do a couple coats. I probably don't want to get it on the sides right here though. So this is acrylic. I believe it will come off fairly easy if we want it to. I think you can just kind of like peel it off. We'll go guys, I hate painting. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I cannot stand painting. All the painting projects in the house, my wife does. I don't have the patience for it. I don't want to be careful. I don't want to do the prep work, but I do like the way it looks on the back of a tank. So that's what we're gonna do. three coats with the acrylic paint and a few passes with this and it worked out really well. So this is going to give us a nice backdrop for our tank. Let's flip her over and see how she looks. That black background is really going to make the green uh, Kudabai Rasboras pop and it is going to make the plants stand out and the rocks look really good. So I'm excited for that. Now that we got our background all painted, the tank cleaned out, it's time to add our garden soil. So again, this is just regular potting soil. It's organic potting soil. And we're going to use this as our base layer for our nutrient-rich substrate so that we can have a healthy planted tank without having to dose fertilizer all the time. Okay, so now we're going to add our substrate in. It's our dirted substrate. So the only thing you got to be careful for. So there's like a piece of plastic in here. So I obviously want to get that out. You could sift your stuff too. I don't really do that. Like I said, I keep it easy. I keep it simple. I just want to get a little nutrients layer down in here. Okay, and it doesn't have to be super thick. I even got some gnats in here because I left this outside, but I mean, that'll be fine. And just like the last tank, I'm going to want to, uh, I want to push this back a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, I left this bag outside. So there's gnats. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to push it back a little bit. So our decorative sand can go up front and I have a bunch of sand still washed from the last project from the beta tank. There we go. That's our nutrients layer in. And sorry about the glare. There's not much I can do about it. I'm not in a, I'm not in a filming studio. I'm just in my office. So, you know, we got to work with what we got. But now I'm going to go get the sand. Oh, I have the sand right here. Perfecto. So again, I'm doing a mix of play sand and paver sand because I think it gives a more natural look. Let's pop this guy up here. Oh boy. And we're going to slope it to the back. Let me make sure I cover in this front area first. Okay, so we're going to keep adding in the sand, making a mess as we do. Should probably go grab a cup or something. Let me get this front layer done. And then we're going to slope it all back. Slope it, slope it, slope it. Okay, I just grabbed one of my kids, one of my kids' little bowls. Sharing is caring after all. Okay, and we want to create a nice slope towards the back like in the other tank. Especially in these smaller tanks, if you slope the substrate to the back of the tank or from the back of the tank, then it creates a lot more dimension and a lot more depth in the tank. So your tank will actually look bigger than it is, which is nice. Okay, let's let's play around with this. Let's see how we look in here. I'm gonna start sloping it. Okay, I want a nice, nice slope. Again, just like last time, the slope is much more predominant when viewing it from the sides. But I got some pretty big pieces of dragonstone rock that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. So I want to make sure that I'm gonna have enough room to put those in and also feature some of the spider wood. I'm just get in here, get in here. I think I want to do maybe one or two more scoops. I like how natural this sand looks when you mix it together with the pavers, with the paver sand. I think you guys are going to love the way this comes out. I'm really excited. I haven't tried the kind of design I'm about to do before, but I'm very excited about it. So we'll get to that point right now. We move all this paint because I'm about, oh, I was trying to think of something clever to say how I was unorganized, but let's just say I'm unorganized. So these are uh, Dragon Rock Stones and they come pre-packaged. I guess they're from Lifeguard Aquatics, but I got these from a local fish store called the Golden Guppy in Torrance, California. So if you're nearby, check them out. It's also where I'm gonna be picking up the green rasboras. These rocks just have such amazing texture to them. Look at that, that is fantastic. Oh, wow. These are gonna look great in here. So I'm gonna play around with it. I'm doing a dual peak, so I think you can kind of figure out what I'm gonna end up trying to do with these. I want to leave some room in the back to plant. Hey, there's one in there. That already looks great. So on this one, you can kind of see where they like cut or broke the stones apart. I'm going to want to try to hide that. I don't like that look right here. I don't think that's a very good look. So we're going to, we're going to try to find a way to prop this up in there where you're not really getting that visual cue. Looks like from the sides here, they're split. And then clearly from the sides right here, they're split. Now I can't really be having that one that tall. Okay, our light just fits over that. That should actually cast a pretty neat shadow. I kind of like the placement of that already. Now I gotta, I'm gonna have to glue some of this wood on. 
So right now I'm just gonna be playing around with it. I think I kind of want this angled back a little more though. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with the way the, the rocks are stacked in there, but I want to incorporate some of this Anubius Nana Petite. And I was trying to find a way how to incorporate some of this spider wood without totally stealing the dramatic impact of the rocks in here. I'm gonna play around with that a little bit more and see if I can't find something that I'm happy with. All right, so I decided to fill up the background of the tank with a little bit more dirt, even thicker substrate. I think it adds a bit more depth to the tank as well. Now, I have these little Nana Petites. Now these just plop right out and then I'm going to use the super glue method to glue them to various points on these rocks. And I think that will look really good. You can see, I actually just had these in the bag they came in. I haven't even had them in the tank and they've held up pretty good. You can just pull them right out of here. So we're gonna line these up. I wanna incorporate the wood, but I, nothing's really speaking to me with the spider wood right now. Well, there's another little root down here. We'll take that guy, perfect. That's the cool thing when you buy these plants. So you get one bundle like this, but you can make, they tend to separate pretty easily. Oh, I'm trying to show you guys without blocking the whole darn camera. But boom, just like that, it just pops right out. Okay, there we go. So out of three pots, I got one, two, three, four, five, five and a quarter, six. Six little Anubius pieces I can play with. Yeah, I like the way that one looks resting right there. So I think we'll try to glue this guy on right now. And I'm gonna squish it on down in. Just gonna squish it and hold it. This is cyanoacculate super glue. And this is perfectly safe in the aquarium. There's nothing to worry about. I'm using some of the grooves to try to lock them in there. We'll see how it works out. I definitely wanna use some of the spider wood. I just, I was playing around with it for like 10 minutes and I felt like I was forcing myself to use the spider wood. And if you're forcing yourself to implement something in your tank, it's probably best to just hold off on it, you know? Wait until it speaks to you. Yeah, this is a nice little piece. That, look, that might look nice right here. This might fit this space nicely. Yeah, I think that one right there will work really good. So again, I'm just gonna take the super glue. I'm just gonna apply some on here. You can wear gloves if you want. You don't wanna get the old sticky fingers. I'm not too worried about it. So you can see I'm just holding it on, applying a bit of pressure, and just trying to get it to grip on there. I'm definitely gonna put a nice piece right here. That's gonna fit a nice piece well. Hopefully it's not too close to the light. These aren't very high, like high light demanding plants, but like this piece somewhere right on top of here, I think that'll look really nice. Yeah, I think that'll look really good. I have the light off because I was trying to get in, but you can see that's gonna add a nice, that adds nice texture to these already beautifully textured rocks. Put the super glue on and then just apply a bit of pressure, get them to sit right where you want them to. I'm gonna need to spray these with water pretty soon. Cause like I said, they've been sitting, this is how hardy Anubius Petite is. This was sitting in a, in a bag from the fish store for the last five days. And it's still alive. It's still alive and doing its thing. Let's find some other cool little grooves to fill in. Well, maybe like a little splash right on the side here. The roots are a little too big on that one. And we got some little dead leaves falling off. Well, maybe right there. I feel like I need slightly bigger. That might be nice right there. Yeah, let's go for it. Like I said, don't overthink it. Just put your, this isn't serious. This is just a fun hobby. You know, don't overthink it. Have fun with it. It's just like any other art. Don't take yourself seriously. Don't take yourself a little seriously. You know, have pride in what you're doing. But don't think it's gonna be the end of the world if you do escape and it didn't turn out the way you wanted. This is all a process. I've been escaping tanks for a long time and I've definitely done scapes where I'm like, oh, all right, well, that didn't exactly turn out like I was hoping it would. Okay, I glued myself to that one a little bit. It stuck to me, not the rock. See, that didn't go the way I planned. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's not that serious. We're just putting plants on a rock in a glass container. Okay, good. Now I got a sufficient amount of super glue all over my hand. And that one doesn't really want to stay right there. Apply a little bit more pressure for a couple more seconds. I need to spray these down. They're drying out pretty quick. The reason they did so well in the, well, not well, but the reason they survived in that bag for so long, it was basically humidity controlled. I do, you know, I do want to add this wood though. I'm just not sure how I want to go about adding it. I feel like I need at least one piece of wood in here, but I need like a tinier spot. Now I don't want to just put it in the middle here because I have a plan for that. And I was going to put it climbing up the rock, but I wasn't a big fan of the way that looked. And we don't want it touching the glass. So if we put this in here and it touches the glass, we're not going to be able to clean the glass. So then that's going to look 
kind of crummy down the road. So that's the one thing about these smaller scapes is you can kind of be limited a little bit. Ooh, maybe that's gonna look good. Let's take a step back. Oh, I kind of like that. You know what? That might be that might be a winner spot right there. I'm gonna have to glue a rock onto that one. Now, ideally, I'd like to mirror it. I'm a big fan of mirroring whatever I do on one side to the other, but I don't have any pieces that will really work. I had this big old chunky dude, but I'm not a big fan of our little phallic shaped thing growing off the side of it. I don't really have a place to hike. Can I just break this? No, nope, I'm not that strong. I'm strong, but I'm not that strong. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen, folks. I got, cause I gotta leave room for my filter too. Cause I wanna do a filter in this tank. See, I could fill up this middle spot, but like I said, I had a plan for that. I had a plan. Could maybe rest something back here like this. I don't know if that's gonna look good or not though. And that's might get in the way of our light. I don't really wanna cover that. Anubius too. Well, let's see. It might cast a nice little shadow. Let's see. Let's see folks. I mean, that could work. I'm not in love with it though. I'm not in love with that. See, now I'm, I'm trying to force myself to use this because I want to mirror that side. But maybe we could get away with a little, you know, it being a little uh, asymmetrical. It is nature after all. Nature's not perfectly symmetrical. Let me grab a little stone and we'll glue that, we'll glue that piece of spider wood down. I wanted to glue the rest of that Anubius on there too. And I just happened to have a stone right behind me. Last time I used some paper towels to secure it. So maybe I'll do it that time, this time too, rather than struggling with it for five minutes and then deciding to do it the right way. Okay, folks, so I got the little piece of paper towel that we're gonna use. And we're just gonna bunch it up, bunch it up like that. So I'm gonna wanna try to secure the rock. Maybe like that would be pretty good. And we're gonna just squish this guy down on top of here. Just gonna give him the old, oh, hold on. It's like that, like that, yeah. Let me pick it up. Oh, it's not really getting the contact point I want. That might be the way. Let me get another another little piece of paper towel. And uh-oh, I'm getting stuck to everything. It's happening, guys. Okay, we're gonna just gloop that in. Oh, I almost stuck my fingers together. I hope you guys saw that. That's pretty entertaining. But we get a little messy. We get a little messy when we get to this point. So now I'm gonna hold this for about 30, 40 seconds. You can see on this finger, I got a good amount of super glue on there. It's honestly because I'm slightly, I'm, I'm in a bit of a hurry here because I need to get to these fish before the store closes and I have to take my son to a play date. So we got a bunch of super glue on this hand. We're gonna put this down here. I'm gonna let this dry for 30 seconds. Yeah, look, see, so it holds right on there. Let's get this bad boy back in. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more super glue right on this point here. And I'm gonna cover that with Cover it with a little bit of sand, and then we don't have to look at the paper towel. And just throw it on there. You can pick up some from there. And just do what you gotta do, and don't stress yourself out. So this piece, I think we'll put this piece of a new, I might even be able to just stick that in right there like that. Perfect, perfect. And let's put this one in over here too. Let's fill out this little bit. Got two little pieces right here. Might be able to just push that down in like that. And that should be good. How'd that turn out? How's that look? I like that. So the one side's fuller than the other, but I'm okay with that. We'll plant, we got a bunch more plants we got to put into. And okay, now we're going to use our handy dandy spray bottle right here. And we're going to miss these plants. We're going to try to keep these hydrated. I'm going to add water in a second, but they're, I could tell that they're starting to dry out. So I don't want them to survive the last few days chilling in a bag just to die because I couldn't make up my mind on where I wanted things. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I like the shadow that's cast from that rock too. Adds a nice little dimension to it. Well, before we add the water, I want to show you guys why I didn't want to fill that middle in with that spider wood. Cause I, like I said, I got a, got a plan for this. I want to create a visually dynamic, almost like a walkway or a mountain path. So these are these Virgo river pebbles. And I'll show you kind of what my idea was. I want to make this center like a gravel little path like the rocks have slowly over time have started to chip away and create like a little valley. I might leave negative space right in the middle too in the back. I haven't decided if I'm gonna put stem plants right back there. I basically, my main idea for this tank were these two main pillars with the Anubius growing on them. There you go, let's take a top down view. Top down view is spectacular. I like that view too. Let's come in along. Let me clean this glass up front. Make sure you guys can see what's going on. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. 
you know, set up your tank however you want. Whatever you think looks neat, that is what you should do because it's your tank. I'm just showing you guys a basic little guide, little concept ideas. I want to get these stem plants in. So if you saw my other video, we're going to do a paper towel method, which will allow us to start adding water to this tank without completely destroying everything that we just did, which is important. We don't want to ruin all our hard work. So the paper towel is going to help disperse the water as it makes contact with the substrate so that we don't expose all of that dirt. Okay, and the key is to slowly fill it up. Use your hand to break up the water and then allow it to come down on the paper towel to the best of your abilities. If you go slowly at this point, you shouldn't have very many problems. So that's going to be a good level for getting the rest of our stem plants in. Let's get out our paper towel. Oh yeah, that's going to look really nice. I'm excited for that. So we still have to add in our stem plants. I'm, like, I'm really liking how this looks. I'm like almost tempted not to put in other stem plants just because I think it looks so clean right now how it is. But I got a bunch of stem plants so I might as well. All right, so the filter fits in right there. I'll put some plants in front of that. But now I have to run my son to a play date and I need to go pick up those fish because the store closes at 7 p.m. So when I get back is when we'll put in the stem plants and then we'll get on with the process. Well, it'll be about an hour and a half my time. We'll see what it is your guys' time. Five seconds, two seconds, who knows? What a mystery. All right, so I went ahead and drained the tank down a little bit because I got these two cool little pieces of spiderwood right here from the aquarium store I go to called the Golden Guppy. And I figured that I could glue these on to the secondary rock, just so I know I said, oh, who cares about symmetry? But I think this would be a nice addition to, to glue onto our second dragonstone rock. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then we'll fill back up and add those stem plants in. A little backtracking, nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to have this one. I think I'll do it like this against the rock. And that's going to create a nice look of like a tree stem growing up. Stick it on the bottom like that. Get more super glue on my finger. This one's a little tricky because there's not a good contact point. I think I'll try a different rock. I'm gonna go for this smaller size rock right here. And we'll drop this in the water. I think I wanna put it like right here. It's like a tree root gr growing up the side of the mountain. And then I wanna take this one, this piece here, and I'll probably attach it like that. I think that would look really cool. And then I'm just gonna try to hold it against here. I prefer not to have to use a paper towel on this one. But if I have to, I have to, and it's no big deal. Maybe I'll just go like this, and where I actually have the contact point, I'm gonna slap some glue on there, and then I can just sprinkle a little bit of sand on it. I'll wait for this to get a hold, and then I'll just sprinkle some sand on it if it looks like it needs it, which it probably will. Grab a little bit of sand, and sprinkle that on top. That will hide the super glue. It's kinda hard to see with the light. Let me bring you in a little closer. Yeah, that looks cool. Wish I would have angled it down a little bit more to be honest, but that's all right. I'm going to stick a little piece of Anubius that I got from the store as well. They kind of threw it in with the shrimp I got because I'm going to put green emerald shrimp in here. So I'll stick the Anubius between those two points there so it hides it a little bit. And then all those plants I pulled out are still doing well. I have them covered with the saran wrap to keep the moisture in. So the guys at Golden Guppy threw this in for free. This little piece of Anubius threw this in for free for me with the shrimp. So what I'll do is I will just tuck this in. Oh, I can move that a little bit, I guess. I'm trying to get it to stay. It doesn't want to stay on me. I want to keep using super glue. Maybe I'll just do it like that. That way it looks like it's kind of branching off from it. It's kind of cool. And maybe I can just weasel this guy in right here. It's not super secure though. It'll hold off for a second until I feel like that's a little more secure. That's pretty secure up over there. It's just his bottom bit. Maybe I should just use a little bit of glue Put it right here. Get the roots in. I'm going to rip off some of these roots so more will grow back. It'll be fine. Hold it down. This is regular Anubius. This isn't Anubius Petite. So it'll get a bit bigger. It should be fine. Yeah, that'll look nice there. That's a nice little pop of green. All right, now I'm going to fill the water back up a little bit and we're going to put in the stem plants. Okay, so let's get into our goodies here. Wow. Look at these roots. It is crazy. Let's shine a light down on so you guys can actually see it. That's wild. I think I'll split this. I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing this. So I'm going to take these already roots. 
I'm just gonna move it around in the water. I mean, we're getting a bunch of that soil off. It's okay if some of it gets in. There we go, that should be good. That looks cleaner. There's still some right here though, hold on. I mean, there's already a bunch of dirt in the tank, but I prefer to have it looking kind of clean from the get-go. I'm going to pull some of these roots off. I should probably trim this down a little bit, but let's just throw it in and see what it looks like. Got this nice deep substrate. There we go. Tuck it in. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here with this other plant uh, as far as rinsing off some of the roots go. Now I want to encapsulate these rocks with this lush green growth like it's a mountainscape surrounded by trees. I need to be careful not to disturb the soil underneath here. <laughs> this one hasn't quite settled down yet. Maybe should have put another another rock on there. Let's see, we can just tuck that in there for now. Yeah, we'll just go like that for now, no big deal. Kind of want to just mainly use this plant. It just grows so well. It takes over the whole scape already though with it being so grown. We're going to sneak this guy too in the back over here. It's a really deep substrate so it should be fine. It's almost more challenging when they have such thick roots. Here, let's drape that around the back here. Wow, it's such a full tank already just with those few. And I kind of want to leave the foreground a bit more sparse. We're going to have a filter in this tank so we don't need to overplant it. Even though the plants look nice. There's so much growth already on these that I'm not super concerned about anything. Just plop this guy back here too. Yeah, these are too big to even use the use the tweezers. I think we can fit a few more in here. So I'm going to trim back some of this already. It's just too tall. I'll be able to replant this all in, in some other tank. So I'm going to use my fingernails. Works just fine. Wherever you trim it back, you'll get new growth off. So it's not nothing to worry about. A lot of times they'll split. So you'll get two nodes coming off the top. Doesn't look as good right away, but it's just a little too much. I want the rocks to be kind of the centerpiece here. We can try leaving the ones in the back nice and tall. Let's trim this guy back a little bit too. Again, you can just use your fingers. You can use scissors if you want, but your fingers will work just fine. If you got some fingernails, push your finger together like this, and then you can just go ahead and trim them. So much growth already. These were doing real well in that other tank. I mean, it's, you can tell just by the roots. Yeah, I like having all the plant growth, but I want this to be kind of more of a hardscape predominant feature. So we'll try to keep this maintained a little more. I do like the jungle look. You guys know I like the jungle look, but I do want the hardscape to be able to kind of shine in this tank. The water's getting kind of uh, dusty because I'm digging around in there so much. I'm trying to decide if I want to fill in this backspace or just leave it open. I think it kind of creates like an interesting perspective to just lead directly into the back over there. So we might leave that just straight up open. Try to decide if I want to use any of these other plants. I have so many, but I don't, again, I don't want the hardscape to lose focus. If I add too many more plants, the hardscape isn't going to be the centerpiece of the tank. And I definitely want that to be the case. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I could add another plant up over here and same in the front. But again, I want the eye to be drawn to the center so that you have the, the two peaks really grabbing your attention. So I think what I'm going to do is take all of these other plants, throw them in my guppy tank, and then I'll have to do a video kind of going through that. So I think I'm going to add a little bit more of these accent rocks. I don't want them too heavy though, because I want maybe it just looked like a few fell off over this way. But again, I want that I want the eye to travel down this center path. I'm gonna sprinkle some on the other rocks too. And that's how it would happen in nature, right? It wouldn't be completely even. You'd have them chipping off. They kind of they match the dragonstone pretty nicely. You do want to get them off the plants though. And a couple more over on this side. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Let's float our fish now. Let me show you the fish we got. There's a hole in this bag. I don't know if you can make them out. We got green Kudabai rasboras. There should be five. I noticed one is kind of is dead in the bag already. So that sucks, but whatever, we'll put it in here. It's got a hole in it. So let's see, I see one, two, I only see three. There should have been five. Maybe they came out in that little hole in this bag. Let me go check in the little bin I had them in. Okay, sure enough. So luckily I put them in a bin, but all these bags I got here have holes in them. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to talk to the guys where I got this from, cause that's, that's pretty, 
That, that sucks. I had it leak all over my floor. There was one dead fish and then another fish that escaped through the hole in the bag. Luckily, I had put it in a you know, bowl, so I still have that one. And then I have some green emerald shrimp in here, which is super cool. Um, but the fact that the bags are leaking, it's kind of lame. Like, depending on how I hold it, it's a pretty sizable leak. So, but anyways, we'll float, float these guys in here for a little bit. Float these shrimp in. These shrimp will be cool. These are green emerald shrimps. They look kind of yellow right now, but they will color up. The males will color up as they get older. So let's go about acclimating these guys. I can't really acclimate the dude who's in the bag or who came out of the bag. So I got him in this bowl here. Uh, unfortunately, so you can see one right there. He's, he's looking good, a little freaked out, but good. And then there was one that was dead on arrival. Now, these tinier fish tend to be a lot more sensitive. So I'm not really, I'm not really perturbed by that. The fact that both the bags were leaking is kind of irritating. So I'm definitely going to speak with them about that. See if they can at least maybe refund me for that one fish that was DOA. I took a picture of it dead in the bag. You know, what are you going to do? These things happen sometimes. Now I am going to add my biological booster since this is a new setup. I do have a cycle filter or cycle media in the filter. So that will help us out. Squirt some of that in there. That'll be good. And then I'm also going to add some of my dechlorinator too. This is the one I had on hand. I also use Seachem Prime, which I like quite a bit, but this works just fine. They all work the, spot, the same. And then I'm gonna plug this filter in. Those green little goodbye rasboras are cool though. And the shrimp are pretty cool. So there's the green emerald shrimp and there's the green goodbye rasboras. The water's a little cloudy. We're gonna turn the filter on. The water is only cloudy because of the planting process. There we go, we got a nice little flow. So that should help clear up the tank too. But we're gonna let these guys acclimate and then we'll introduce them to the tank. Alrighty, so it's been about 25 minutes. These guys are ready to be released into their new home. There's the green kudabais and there's the green, green jade shrimp. Now they look yellow, but they will get green coloration as they mature. So typically I would not introduce aquarium store fish water into my tank, but there's no other fish in here. So we should be fine. The water will clear up a little bit more. It's still pretty clear. Something about the light and this camera lens kind of makes things feel a little bit foggy. The lens is clean, so I'm not sure what that is. I am a novice videographer, so I do not have the answers for all that. But we're gonna just dump these guys in. We're gonna dump them into their new home, and they can explore. And they'll get some better shots without these bags blocking all the view. And we'll have four that goes in here. I wanted 10, but they lost a couple in the store. So I'm hoping they do all right in the tank. Wow, they look cool. They look pretty cool. I like that green coloration. We'll get some close shots in here in a minute. Let me get these shrimpy boys in too. There's a little piece of moss in here. I'll just let that go around the tank and do its thing, settle wherever it wants. Okay, and there's one green rasbora in here. All right, come on out guys. They're all hanging onto the mesh. Okay, one went in, two went in. Come on, get out. Let's see you guys, get out of here. Get out my dudes. There's one hanging on there. And the other stragglers. We'll just throw this moss in. I won't mind that, that moss growing. Cool beans. Let me reach in here. I really want this mesh in here. Look, we had some sh snails on the plants. So we already got some snails in here. That's good, I love the snails. All right, dual peak build. Be a little better to see when it's not so cloudy tomorrow. We got a dragonstone piece here with Anubius uh, Petite on it. A dragonstone here with Anubius Petite and regular Anubius. I still don't know what these, what the name of this plant is, but I have it <laughs> in all my tanks and it grows real well. And then we got our shrimpy boys. We got our green jade shrimp that are kind of yellow looking right now, but they should develop, the male should develop a nice greenness to them. And then the green goodbye rasboras. Now, once they're settled in tomorrow and the water's cleared up, I'll get you guys a better view, but these are tiny fish. But I love the pathway that's created here with these two dragon stones. It's already such an active tank and your eyes just drawn to the center with a black background, it pulls you in. It's amazing, I love it. These are cool little rasboras too. Look at them go. I like the bit of moss too that's on the bottom now.
Jeez. So beautiful. Yeah, I'm happy with the way this came out. It looks real natural and I love just that depth that's created in the center of the tank. Not putting plants in there was a good idea. I was really tempted to put some plants in there, right in the center, but I'm glad I decided not to. How very cool. I'm excited to see with it being perfectly clear tomorrow, how well this looks.